Today's first myth came via request a few weeks back, but it's taken me a while to get the hard information that I needed on this one, as it raised the question of whether or not the great David Lee Roth once ensured his his manhood. As one of the greatest frontmen of all time, Diamond Dave's persona and his love for excess were pretty well documented throughout the 1980s. But this one gave me a moment's pause because it seemed a little bit out there, even for him. But there is actually a great deal of truth to this, as not long ago, Roth gave an interview where he was talking about the early days of Van Halen, and how before one of the tours they went on, Eddie got his fingers insured and Alex got his elbows insured simply because they were so vital to the band's sound, and because they would be getting so much use during the tour. This practice is not at all uncommon in music, as musicians do need to look out for their well-being if anything happens. And well, Dave being the guy that he is, said that since they'd be using those body parts a lot, he'd be using his body part a lot, and it should receive similar insurance. After doing some digging, I managed to find the paperwork that showed David Lee Roth did in fact take out an insurance policy with Lloyds of London to cover, yep, his penis. 100% true, folks, and another reason to love Diamond Dave. Our second myth today has been around since the late 70s, and it's the claim that famed baseball player and announcer Phil Rizzuto had no idea about the content text behind Meat Loaf's song Paradise by the Dashboard Light that he famously recorded a play-by-play -play for. We all know the song, and this may very well be the longest and most heavy-handed euphemism in all of music history. But at the same time, this is definitely also an iconic music moment. After the song was released, Rizzuto claimed that during the recording process, Meat Loaf wouldn't tell him what the rest of the song was about, and he felt he was a bit duped and may not have done it had he known it had such strong sexual overtones. On the other side, The Loaf basically said that Phil Rizzuto knew exactly what was going on, and his statements were probably inspired by the fact that his church priest called him out saying he shouldn't have been involved in such a risque project. Obviously, this comes down to one person's word versus another, and I tend to side with Meatloaf on this one. While the song certainly broke him on a massive scale, he was not an unknown performer at that time. And when you look at his previous work, it was certainly clear the types of songs that he made. And let's be honest, the baseball euphemism isn't exactly something new. In his later years, Rizzuto joked about this a lot, having a rather lighthearted attitude about it, but still saying that he was tricked in some way. But as I see it, whether or not Phil Rizzuto did his research is beside the point because if he didn't, he got what he deserved for not doing a little bit of checking into the performer. My final myth today is one of the oldest and most commonly spoken, and it's the claim that Mama Cass and Keith Moon died in the same room, though four years apart. On July 29th, 1974, Mama Cass passed away from a heart attack, and I have dispelled that ham sandwich death claim a long time ago. Then on September 6th, 1978, Keith Moon passed away after an accidental overdose on sleeping pills. As odd as it may seem, this is 100% true, as both of them were renting out the same London flat, which was owned by singer Harry Nilsson. Due to the realities of his own musical career, Harry Nilsson often rented out the flat to his friends when they were in town because he wasn't using it, and both Cass and Moon happened to be living in that space when they died. One other strange note is that following the death of Keith Moon, Harry Nilsson wanted nothing to do with the apartment, as he was understandably a little bit freaked out by it. And who did he sell it to? That's right, the Who's Pete Townsend. No joke. So those are my myths for this week. Be sure to check back here every Thursday as I delve into some of the coolest stories in music history, and be here every day for all the music news, reviews, and knowledge you'll ever need. Hey!